Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. Y'all, it has been just downright frigid here in Texas for the past several days. I actually wanted to do this video a few days ago and get it out to you sooner, but the temperature out in my shop has been down in the 20s. And even today, when it started to warm up a little bit, before I turned on the heater, the temperature was actually lower than Joe Biden's approval rating. But anyway, so today what we're going to be talking about is survival gear that you will actually use. Now when I'm talking about survival gear, I'm not necessarily just talking about stuff that you can use if you're surviving out in the middle of the woods. This is more also, you know, prepper gear also that could be used during emergencies at home. The first piece of gear that I want to talk about is a Berkey water filter. It's going to allow you to have clean water during pretty much any type of an emergency because clean water, it's something that you gotta have, unless of course you wanna try a new hobby called being dead. And basically the only thing that it won't do is filter out salt water. It'll remove various types of bacteria, protozoa, viruses, as well as chemicals, so it'll cover a lot of different bases. It's also important to understand that while a Berkey can remove a lot of different things. If you are in a truly bad long-term situation where you're having to consume water that has been contaminated and there's just no other choice, then you would probably want to add a couple more steps to the process just to have like a little bit of extra life insurance to make sure that you and your family aren't drinking contaminated water. And you can learn more about that in my how to purify water during a long-term disaster video. And I will put that and um, in the description below, but please finish this video first. Don't leave yet because it'll look bad to the algorithm and we don't want that. The next piece of prepper or survival gear that you will actually use is going to be water containers. They have several different uses. First of all, they allow you to store water, have it in your house ready to go if there's an emergency, but Perhaps even more importantly, they allow you to take fresh, clean water with you wherever you go. Whether that's a camping trip, a road trip, or if you have to bug out to an alternate location for the safety of you and your loved ones. I know me and my family personally, if we go on a road trip, then we'll be sure to put at least one or two like aquatainers in the back of our car so that if there's a situation where we're stranded or something else happens, we'll at least have water to last us a couple of days. Now, given we haven't taken all that many road trips recently because, well, toddler. Idiot. <laughs> oh! But when we do start taking road trips again, we're definitely gonna keep a couple in the car with us. And when it comes to which water containers you choose, you have a few different options. I think that for most folks, a good kind of entry level water container is going to be the Reliance Aquatainer. It holds seven gallons. It also does come with a spigot, which a lot of other water containers like this you do have to pay extra for or buy separately or like jerry rig something up. Now some other ones, if you want something like Military Tough, then the Scepter Military Water Can is going to be a good option. And if you're limited on space, but you still want to have water storage in like those types of containers, then something like the water brick or the aqua brick would probably be a good choice for you, but you do have to order the spigot separately. It is an additional cost. The next piece of prepper or survival gear that you will actually use is going to be a good multi-tool. And when it comes to multi-tools, a lot of the times people think of the traditional pliers based multi-tool that has different types of blades and screwdrivers centered around a pair of needle nose pliers. But the thing with those is while they're great to keep in a bag or on a belt pouch, you're not really going to be able to keep them in your pocket all that much. Now, given there are some smaller ones like the Leatherman Squirt, which would fit like on your key ring and you can put those in your pockets. But if you're willing to carry like a separate pair of pliers and something like an EDC bag or something like that, then the traditional Swiss Army knife is a great choice for a multifunctional tool that you can keep in your pocket pretty much at all times. If you go with something like the Huntsman, it's probably going to be just a little bit over half of the thickness of this, 
but it's still gonna have a wood saw, which isn't something that you're gonna use just in everyday life probably all that much, but if you are in like a wilderness survival situation, then this is, these are pretty decent saws. But pretty much every Swiss Army knife is gonna come with at least one blade, which these are perfectly fine for doing most tasks that you would need a blade to perform. And then also it comes with a decent set of screwdrivers, like this is a flathead, it's also a bottle opener, it has a little wire stripper notch, which isn't the best wire stripper, but the screwdriver is pretty decent and it can do some light prying as well. Notice how it locks at 90 degrees and 180 degrees. And then over here on the can opener, and the can opener works exceptionally well. I did a video showing how to use these different types of can openers. It also has a small tip right here, which can be used on Phillips head screws. You can just use these just so much during the day. It, 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 once you start carrying one, it, you'll be surprised at how much you actually use it. The next piece of prepper or survival gear that you will actually use is going to be a decent EDC flashlight. And there's several different options, several different brands. I'm not really gonna like try to sell you on one specific flashlight. I've used Olights, which I mean, they're fine. They have some switch issues that I've noticed. Don't, don't drop them or the switches do funny things. Uh, I do like Maglite. They're not as fancy or as tactical as like Streamlight or um, what's the other one? Surefire. But I have had an XL50 that I have just beat the mess out of and it still works great. It just runs on normal AA batteries. But um, I mean, you can get one this size and the XL50 is about that same size or you can get something even smaller. I know several different manufacturers, they make flashlights are probably no bigger than that and that might be easier for a lot of you guys to pocket carry. The next piece of prepper or survival gear that you will actually use is going to be a good EDC bag. Now, the way I like to do my EDC is I like to have it layered. So layer one is the stuff that I carry on my person pretty much at all times. So that's gonna be things like the Swiss Army knife I showed y'all earlier, my flashlight, I have like a little tiny ferro rod that I keep in my wallet, and then when I'm able to, you know, my pistol. That's layer one. Then layer two is what goes in that EDC bag. So that's going to be maybe backup flashlights, battery banks, charging cables so that you can keep your phone or maybe your flashlight if it's USB rechargeable up and running. I also keep a ratcheting tourniquet in that bag along with a vehicle jump starter, gloves, and a whole bunch of other different things. And of course, what you keep in your EDC bag is dependent on what you need for your everyday life and what you think that you would need during an emergency. I kind of see it as my prepper man purse, my permerse, I guess. And the EDC bag that I have, it's actually a 511, I think it's a Covert 18. I've had that thing for, I think, probably seven or eight years now. I think this particular model has been discontinued and they've come out with another one. But the thing I like about it is it blends into my environment. It's not an overly tactical looking backpack. So it doesn't really draw that much attention to me. It, it does a good job kind of helping keep me more as the gray man. And I've even cut off the tags that would identify it as a 511 just to make it even more gray, help it blend in even more. It has a, a compartment where you can keep your concealed weapon if you do that sort of thing. And then also has several different other compartments, some which are kind of hidden, which of course is cool, has comfy straps. Now, what you might want to have as an EDC bag, maybe you don't want a backpack. Maybe you're, um, you're a lady who works in a professional environment. Maybe you want something more purse related. So, and there's, there's a lot of different options out there for that as well. So when it comes to an EDC bag, find something that will blend in to your everyday life and the places that you go and won't really draw attention to you but also have something that will carry the things that you need, organize it in the way that you need organized, and also have any special features that you want, such as a concealed weapons compartment. The next piece of prepper and survival gear that you will actually use is a can rotator. Now, food storage is probably one of your most important preps. Without food, you're not gonna make it far. And in order to be able to store as much as possible, you need to be organized about it and you want to make sure that 
you're eating the older stuff first so that you really don't have to worry about waste. And a can rotator that works on a first in first out basis, that is gonna allow you to do that. Now, the can rotator that I have is made by a company called Shelf Reliance. You can buy it directly from them. You can buy them on Amazon. And this particular one that I have, it is designed to hold up to 60 different cans and you can adjust it for different sizes of cans. Like I have large spaghetti sauce cans all the way down to small cans of stuff like Rotel in that same can rotator. And what I really like about it is that you can order additional pieces so that you can expand your system. You don't just have to buy a whole new like $40 or $50 system. You can buy the tracks and the connector pieces separately from their website so that let's say you just want to have maybe one or two more places to put cans. Then you can go ahead and do that for a relatively low cost. So the next prepper or survival item that you will actually use is going to be a generator. Now a generator might not be something that you use every day, but as preppers, I think we all understand that sooner or later, us and our loved ones, we're gonna experience a situation where we lose power and we're gonna wanna be able to keep essential devices and certain appliances running through the duration of that event. And when it comes to generators, it kinda comes down to gas power generators, versus solar power generators or battery inverters, whatever you want to call them. And with a traditional gasoline generator, the big advantage to those is if you get a mid-sized generator, something that has four or 5,000 like running watts, then you're gonna be able to run a significant amount of appliances, including some larger ones. Like you're gonna be able to run your box freezer, your refrigerator, pretty much as long as you have fuel without any issue. But the problem with the gas generator is once you run out of fuel, then it's done. It's just a huge honking big mass of metal in your yard or your garage. Now when it comes to solar power, it's not gonna be able to run larger appliances, especially for an extended period of time. Like even if you have a larger solar power station, then you might be able to run a fridge for like maybe six hours before it needs to charge up. You'll be able to run a deep freeze for longer, but where a solar generator really has an advantage is it's gonna be able to keep essential devices, like smaller devices running pretty much indefinitely. So after your gas generator's out of gas and just collecting dust, then you're gonna continue to be able to gather solar energy to use smaller devices, which that brings me to my next item that preppers will actually use, and that's gonna be rechargeable batteries. I think a lot of the times people don't necessarily see a use in something like a solar generator is because, you know, of course it's not gonna be able to keep, you know, like your central heating and air running most of the time, and that, that's a big concern for a lot of people. And they're like, what's the point of keeping my cell phone charged? Because, I mean, really, I'm not going to be using it. But it goes beyond just having the ability to use your cell phone. If you have rechargeable batteries, then you're going to be able to use a solar power station to keep things like flashlights, radios, lanterns up and running for pretty much as long as you need to. And in my case, I showed in a video a couple weeks ago that I have some battery operated motion sensors. The receiver station also has a battery backup. So that's going to allow me to have at least some form of a security system up and running, even in a total grid down situation, because I'm using rechargeable batteries in conjunction with a solar power station and some panels. The next piece of prepper or survival gear that you will actually use is going to be Bic lighters. When I say Bic lighters, I actually do mean Bic brand lighters because in my opinion, they're not all that expensive, but they are much more reliable than the cheaper brands are. And try to have a mix of both the smaller lighters, like you can keep in your bug out bag in case you need to start a fire like in a survival situation, as well as the longer grill style lighters that you can keep at home. And that brings me to the next piece of prepper or survival gear that you will actually use, which is gonna be things like grills or camp stoves. So when it comes to grills, of course, gas grills and charcoal grills, those are both good options, but I would really see those more as something that 
you would use for cookouts or at the beginning of an emergency or disaster like a hurricane party where everybody knows their food's about to spoil so they just go ahead and you know have a neighborhood feast because if you start grilling outside once everybody has you know not had a meal in a few days then that's really going to be drawing a lot of unwanted attention to you you don't want to be cooking up a nice steak dinner when your next door neighbors thinking Am I going to have to eat my cat? Chances are, somebody's probably going to be knocking on your door going, Please, sir, may I have some food? And you don't want to put yourself in that situation. Then on the more small portable side of things, camp stoves, those are great. I have several different ones. But the good thing about those is you're going to be able to take them with you if you have to bug out. They don't take up a lot of space. They generally run on those small one pound propane bottles and of course you can get adapters where you can hook them up to a 20 pound tank or larger. And then there's also butane stoves. And when selecting a camp stove, try to have at least one that is indoor safe so that you can cook indoors if you need to. And even if you do have an indoor safe like camp stove, it's a good idea to have a battery operated carbon monoxide detector with you just because you don't want those gases to build up because they are dangerous, so they are, they are extremely deadly. And the reason why I have that in here with me is I'm actually running a heater in here now, and y'all might remember my temperature's lower than Joe Biden's approval rating joke earlier in the video. Well, I have a little propane buddy heater in here keeping me warm, and I'm trying to be as safe as possible about that. So having grills and camp stoves are great because you're going to use them, but they'll also allow you to prepare food if your normal methods of cooking, especially you live, if you live in a house that has electrical appliances, are no longer running. And the next piece of prep or survival gear that you're actually going to use is something that I mentioned a second ago, and that's going to be like portable propane space heaters, but also fans for more warmer weather. Like generators and like the camp stoves, they might not be something that you use every day, but they are things that you are likely going to need sooner or later. And with the, the buddy heaters, you know, I mean, they can, they can keep small spaces warm, like what I'm doing now. If you're tent camping, they can keep your tent warm. And anytime you use those, of course, you want to be aware of the dangers of carbon monoxide detector. Yay. Um, but then on the other side of things, the fans, if you have battery operated fans, those are going to allow you to stay cool during warmer weather power outages. And when selecting fans, if, if there's any way possible to select one that can run on batteries or an AC power adapter, go ahead and get that one because you might want to use that fan in a situation where maybe the power is still on, but you just need a little bit more air circulation and having the ability to use it both with power and without power then that's just going to make that much more useful for you and you're going to get your money's worth out of it. And then of course there's other prepper items that you're definitely going to get use out of. Different types of clothing, especially for cold weather, like, you know, getting like a good like merino wool hat, that's going to be a good idea. Different types of jackets, cold weather, like waterproof boots, those are great. And then on like kind of a different side of things, like, I mean, ammo, I mean... <laughs> You're going to use that, I mean, whether in defense, hunting, or just a fun day at the range. So here's the thing. This is one of those topics where there are just tons of different prepper and survival items that you could probably use in everyday life that I left off of this list. So go ahead and drop those in the comments below if I get enough responses then maybe I can roll them into kind of a part two of this video. So thank you guys for stopping by. Y'all have a good one. Don't forget to drop what I missed down in the comments below. Thanks again.